So how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great, and I hope you're all staying safe. Last time I did a video on Unraid, it did pretty damn well. In fact, it even got featured on the Unraid Twitter account, which was a pretty big deal to me. And a pretty big deal overall, if you ask anyone. <laughs> I mean, we were right there above Linus, so thank you so much for that, Unraid. It means a lot. But you guys seem to really enjoy that video. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna make another one. This time, a detailed review and showing you a lot more things about what Unraid can do and even show you my Unraid server in detail. So you know what? Let's do exactly that. I'll meet you at the next location. So Unraid is something that I really wanted to talk to you guys about in more detail because I feel you guys deserve to know all the features that come with it and because I absolutely love Unraid so much and because I'm such a big fan of it, I feel you guys deserve to know exactly what I'm using on it and the features that it has. So I'm gonna go through every page one by one in Unraid and show you guys exactly what it can do and what I'm using it for. How about that? So today I'm going to tell you guys a lot more about Unraid because I love it and I don't feel like I told you guys everything about it. I'm going to connect to my Unraid server now because it is port forwarded, which means I can access it anywhere around the world, which is great. Because if you ever need to access any of your files or your Docker containers, they should be right there at your fingertips through your phone or through your laptop or computer. If you like bringing your desktop around, I'm not going to judge. Okay, so right here you see my Unraid server. It gone down in storage a little bit because the NAS I have is physically tiny. You guys have seen it before in previous episodes. But yeah, I literally cannot fit more than four hard drives in there. And when something is full, I need to replace it. Also, you can see I have a bunch of notifications coming up. This is because Unraid checks my hard drives from time to time just to make sure they're safe and healthy. You know, no bad sectors, etc. because that is the last thing you want. So you can probably tell I'm making quite a bit of mistakes in my ARRI here. I have no parity drive therefore if anything fails it fails forever but yet again I'm limited as to how many hard drives I can fit inside my NAS because it's tiny physically tiny and therefore this is all I can do I am aware of my mistakes so don't you guys go pointing them out to me so now let's click into shares shares are your SMB shares also known as Samba shares they're what allow you to access your folders and files by using the Windows file explorer protocol also known as SMB. Thanks to this, you can access all your files and folders just like you would a normal file on your computer. That is why I can connect to it right now by using the Windows Explorer, typing in the IP address, and seeing all my files as if they were there on my hard drive locally. And because I have gigabit, which tends to work pretty damn well, I can access them at pretty damn good speeds wherever I am in the world, therefore using them almost as if they were local. Now that is something I really enjoy, because this means that I can also access my Samba shares on all other devices that support it. For example, my Android phone by using a file manager such as Solid Explorer or on an iPhone by using other file managers that I have no clue about because my iPhone died. <laughs> I guess that's what I get for talking crap about it. So these are all your shares. These are all the folders that you will be able to control using Unraid, giving access or denying access to certain users, which we will move on to in just a second. So really quickly jumping up to the tippity top, which is your dashboard, which is like my favorite page because it looks the coolest. You can straight up tell, you can see all my Docker containers that are running there. You can also see the ones that aren't running. Next to that, you have your parity drive. Mine is non-existent. Under that, you have your array. And as you can see, mine is completely healthy. You can see your temperature there and the status, whether they are active or inactive. Here, you can also change your custom icon, which is really cool because this appears during login. You see your uptime, registration, the name of your NAS, 
Under that, you see your motherboard, your processor load, your memory load, and your interface. As you can see, my one says 100 megabits. That's actually incorrect. That's just something my motherboard does from time to time. To the right of that, you see your shares, and at the very bottom, you see your users, which we will, again, move on to in just a bit. Back to the main page, which is the page we started on. As you can see, you can see your hard drive temperature here. You can see your reads, your writes, and your errors. And thankfully, I don't have any errors. So that's something Unraid actually checks for. And if it does find any errors on my hard drive, it actually pings me on Telegram. So yes, this is a really cool pattern of Unraid. You can set it up to send you a notification onto your phone on Telegram if it finds any read errors on your hard drive. Scrolling down a little lower, you can also access your USB drive here, because why not? Of course, Unraid runs on a USB drive, so of course you'd want to access that from time to time. And down even lower, as you can see, I have unassigned devices, which we will talk about a little bit later, my SMP shares and FS shares, ISO file shares, and a few other things. At the very, very bottom, you have your stop, which will stop the array in case you want to take it offline for some reason. You have your check button, which will check your drives for any errors in case you want to do that manually. You have your history, which will tell you when your drive was checked. You have your spin up, spin down to spin the drives up or spin them down. Clear the stats of the drives. You have your reboot and your shutdown. This is probably the page where you will go if you want to control your NAS in any way. So now clicking into users, this is a pretty simple page. On this page, it's literally just what it's called. Here you can add or remove users, which then you can give or decline access to certain folders on your SMB shares or give them access, but for example, not allow them to change anything about it. So they'll be able to access the folder, but they won't be able to delete or add anything to it, which is really cool. But all that is actually controlled under the shares tab. Once you click on the name of the share that you want to customize, this tab is simply for adding or removing users. And of course, adding the beautiful custom icons, which I need to blur out because some people decided to add some weird things. Now let's move on to the settings tab. Now there's quite a bit of things to change in the settings tab. So I'm gonna go over the basics and some of the things that I personally use, because if I were to go over everything, it would take a very long time. But don't worry, there's tons of videos on the internet that go over how to do probably the specific thing that you want to do. So for example, you have your network settings here. In network settings, it allows you to set a static IP, which would be necessary if you're accessing this quite a lot. And it also allows you to change the port in case you want to port forward it and don't want the default port, which I believe is 80, to access the NAS because port 80 is quite a dangerous port to open in general. And therefore you might want to change that in the network settings. Here, as you can also see, you have your identification, which is the name of your NAS and other stuff that will help you identify on the network, your date and time, that's pretty simple. Global share settings, again, pretty damn basic stuff. Your VM manager in case you are running any virtual machines. All the settings that are required for those can be found in there. And then under that, you have your network services, your AFP, your NFS, your SMB, your FTP server. And then under that, you have a few plugins that I have, for example, speed test and syslog server. Syslog server actually, I believe, is part of the system. Speed test, however, isn't. Speed test is pretty cool. It automatically checks the speed of my internet connection every one hour and uh, sends me a log of it. So that's pretty cool. Thanks to it, I I can see when my network was down or when it wasn't up to speed. Helps me identify where the bugs are. Under that, we have user preferences. Again, pretty simple stuff. Display settings in case you have a display connected to it. I don't, mine is running completely headless. Under that, we have sleep settings. Sleep settings is pretty cool. It's another plugin that I have installed. So that's under user utilities. Basically, these are all the plugins that I have installed. Sleep settings is really cool. Sleep settings allows you to put the NAS into S3 deep sleep, basically allowing it to be off or in sleep mode until you, for example, ping it on, for example, your SMB port or, for example, the port of your Unraid server itself, well, this is a great way to do it. Settings are right there and it does work. It works really, really well. Wake on LAN, perfect on this. Ping it. Now, all that needs to be set up and I used to have that set up before I needed it to run 24-7. What that means is every time I would try to access it, the SMB share or try to access the web interface, it would wake the NAS up using the wake on LAN protocol. Now, all that was set up in my router, but what made it work was this sleep settings plugin from Dynamics. Thanks to this, the NAS could go offline if the drives weren't being used or if there wasn't enough network activity. So really cool if you wanna play around with that, save on some power, save on some energy. 
Next one we have is system temperature. That's another plugin I have there. Pretty self-explanatory, you know, to check your system temperature in case something's overheating. And of course, I find that pretty important because my thing used to overheat quite a lot. Then we have unassigned devices. And unassigned devices is really a great plugin because what it does is it allows you to connect external USB hard drive to your Unraid server and use them as SMB shares. I absolutely love this thing. It's super, super cool. It allows you to basically add more storage in addition to the SATA drives that you already have. Or in case you just want to share some files with somebody, you just plug in an external hard drive or a USB stick and boom, it shows up as an SMB share. It also has the auto mount feature. So anytime you plug something in, it automatically finds it and mounts it so that you don't have to go into here every time to mount it. How cool is that? Next to that, we have user scripts, which are basically cron scripts. What I would use these for in the past would be to start and stop AMP at a certain time of the day, meaning it would start and stop my Minecraft server at a certain time of the day. And under that, we have control IR and I don't know what that is. I totally forgot what that is. I don't know what it's doing there. Now, after this, we can jump straight into the plugins. Now, these are just the plugins I was telling you guys I have installed. So as you see, the only one that we haven't mentioned at the very tippity top is Community Applications, which is an absolutely incredible plugin that we will move on to in just a second, but is a must have for any Unraid user. Now, as you can see, these are just roughly all the plugins that I'm currently using that I have running. Uh, moving into Docker, these are all the Docker containers. And as you can see, you can auto start them shows you everything. So if you guys are familiar with Docker, this is where all the Docker containers are at. This is where you'd run them, where you'd add them manually, but you don't need to add them manually because there's also an apps tab. And this is probably my favorite tab because going into this, you can add and remove community applications because the community for Unraid is currently thriving. It's huge. And anything you are looking for, you will probably find here. There's also the cool tab here to the left in case you don't know what you're looking for and you just want to find something cool. You can go into downloaders, you can go into cloud, and it'll basically show you a few really cool apps that you could be adding to your Unraid NAS. And all it takes is one click from the community app store. If you were doing it manually, you know, there'd be quite a bit more than one click, but thanks to the community app store, it's as simple as searching up what you're looking for or just looking through the bunch of apps they have and clicking one button to install it on your Unraid NAS. That's pretty cool. Now, that's why I'm saying it's a must have plugin or add on because come on, who wouldn't want this? <laughs> then clicking into tools, it's just a bunch more settings that I honestly don't think I need to go through. It basically just gives you the system log, update OS, registration, system devices, more of the info than anything else. Going down lower, you have the log out option in case you want to log out. Even lower, you have the terminal. Of course, it's a Linux-based operating system. So of course, here you have access to everything like LS, CD dot dot, and then LS. And you know, it's a Linux thing. So if you have any specific Linux software that you might want to run on this, it would probably work out. For example, I'm running Pulseway on this when it starts up, and that works pretty damn well. And that isn't an Unraid plugin. That is something that is actually running behind Unraid. So that's pretty cool. Going down lower, we have the feedback tab. My feedback is all positive. Even lower, we have help, which will show you a bunch of different boxes underneath options that they have in case you need help. Then we have the info, which will show you all the info about the current hardware that it's running on. And under that, we have the log. And I think you guys can start seeing why I love Unraid so much. I really wanted to come back and I wanted to make this video to show you guys Unraid one by one, to show you why I love it so much, what features it has, because as you can probably tell, it really can do quite a bit. And thank you again so much to Unraid for making such an unbelievable, amazing piece of software that makes my life really, really easy and allows me to do so much more than I would ever want to do or even think of doing. This thing gives me the possibility of doing that. Unraid didn't give me the key or didn't sponsor me in any way, but hey, if you ever want to work on a project together, you guys know where to find me. I'm all in. I just absolutely love their software and that's why I'm here telling you guys all about it. So if you guys liked today's video, I hope it helped you out. I hope you found out even more about Unraid because today was the detailed episode where I tell you so much more. And if you have any questions, let me know down below if you guys want to start up your own Unraid server. And if you join the Discord, well, we have some tech support people. We can try to help you. But yeah, if you guys liked today's video, please give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys want to be notified about future content, I upload tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. But if you're not yet part of this community and you want to join it, we have a Discord down below. We also have a Reddit down below where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And if this kind of stuff floats your boat, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.